I'm trying to do a series on the lost and the forgotten people in this country. Yeah, no, I get it. Now missing herself, this body camera video is one of the last known sightings of Chelsea Grimm, a California woman who vanished. I'm not very well. As every day goes by, it's harder and harder to stay positive and upbeat. And we try to keep focused on the end goal, which is to bring Chelsea home safely. What started as a cross-country road trip quickly turned into a parent's worst nightmare when 32-year-old Chelsea Grimm went missing without a trace. Her parents now left with more questions than answers in their desperate search for their daughter. It's a nightmare and it's one that you never could have imagined yourself in and wouldn't wish on anybody. But having said that, we're hanging in there, we're holding on to hope, putting our faith in, um, in the law enforcement uh, professionals. Grimm was last seen on September 30th in Ash Fork, Arizona, about 50 minutes west of Flagstaff. Just days before, she'd set off on a cross-country road trip leaving San Diego headed to Connecticut for a family member's wedding. Grimm's mother, Janet Grimm, says just before she was set to fly out east, her daughter made a last minute change of plans. Chelsea was going to fly home for a wedding um, on the, in Connecticut, well, New York. She was flying home to go to this wedding and see us. And the day she was supposed to be on the airplane, she emailed Steve and said that she was going to drive across country instead. And so that was on the 24th of September. Chelsea's father, Stephen Grimm, says it wasn't surprising his daughter made this last minute change. Um, I would say it's not at all out of character for the change plans at the last minute. Um, that was a f characteristic of her. Um, she had adopted this um, yeah. dragon lizard. Bearded dragon. Bearded dragon. Uh, she had adopted a bearded dragon and said she didn't want to come without it, and you can't. And she couldn't bring it on the plane, so that ostensibly was the reason um, that she gave us. Alone, traveling only with her bearded dragon, Grim set off toward the East Coast. But several days into her trip, she told her parents she wouldn't make it in time for the wedding. That conversation and update was the last time her parents heard from her. The last contact, we, we were texting back and forth with her and she said, I've driven for three days, I'm in Arizona. I'm not gonna make it to the East Coast for the wedding. I think I'm gonna just skip the wedding and stop here for a day or two and do some camping. She had her tent and her sleeping bag with her in the car when she left. And then radio silence. And we, she had told us she was gonna probably be out of on range for a couple of days. So a couple of days, it wasn't, we weren't alarmed. But then when two or three more days went by, and we usually texted or talked to her daily. So when a couple of days went by and we hadn't heard from her, I, we got really worried. So we called um, it in as a missing persons report on the 4th of October. Investigators confirmed one of her last encounters was with law enforcement on the 28th. Body camera video shows an officer approach Chelsea's vehicle outside of a cemetery. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? I'm okay. How are you? I'm doing great. Are you doing all right? Yeah, I just was doing a photo shoot of the lost soldiers and got a little emotional. So I'm I was so... crying before okay. I got back on the road. Chelsea can be heard telling the officer she's a bit emotional after working on a photo shoot about fallen soldiers. Yeah, okay. I'm just making sure someone called it in. So I'm, I'm, oh, I'm sorry. No, no, you're quite all right. I mean, this... I was just doing a photo shoot. Yeah, um, packed up. I'm going to leave soon. Okay. But I just didn't want to drive like that. Sad. I got you. You've been smoking a little bit of marijuana? Um, earlier today, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, cool. Do you have your license on you by any chance? Yeah. gets me all emotional too. Yeah, it's just, you know, um, I'm trying to do a series on the lost and the forgotten people in this country. 
She later discusses where to stay while she's on the road before parting ways with the officer. Um, I know you told me that you, you smoked marijuana and you're kind of, well, obviously I would be in an emotional state as well. I don't know if you want somebody else to drive you or if you just want to um, hang out here for a little bit longer. You're more than welcome to do that. Yeah, if it's okay with you. To, yeah. If I hang out here for another like 15 or 20 and then head on the road, that would be my plan, sure. I think. Yeah, I don't see any signs of impairment or anything like that. So. Yeah, no, I, that's, I just... I mean, with my with my eyesight and then crying, it's not the best combination at night. I, I, totally <laughs> I was like, understand. I'm just gonna like cry on the road, or I'm just gonna sit here and cry. So I, I got have you. my dragon, and I'm just. Oh, gonna... that's freaking cool! I didn't even notice that. Thanks, Rosie. Wow, Rosie, I that's. Think she's asleep. Wow, right on. She got bored. Yeah. Uh, do you have like a hotel around here or anything? I don't. I was actually thinking of just camping for the night, but I wasn't really sure exactly yet. Gotcha. Well, I didn't you... plan to be here until sunset. Okay. You can't camp in the city limits. It's kind of like a city statute we have. Okay, good But job. you can always go. I don't know if you can see like the the yellow lights over there. The loves. It's a trucker stop in okay. in the gas station area. You can just sleep there. Nobody oh, will, nobody will bother you. Awesome. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. Get some good shots at sunrise too there. Oh, right on. Yeah. Yeah. The okay. sunrise here too. Uh, if you ever want to take photo shoots of like the statues in the morning, dude, it's it's really cool because the sun like rises right behind them. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll probably stay at the truck stop then, save some money, and then Boom. come over for the sunrise. You got it. Cool. All right. Well, well you, you have a great time. Well, she was very into photography. So, and she was had been doing. She had done some articles and some photography in San Diego as part of the way she was supporting herself. And so, it, to hear that she was doing a story on lost veterans was not is not unusual. Um, I don't know the circumstances under which she was taking pictures in a graveyard at night. So I. I really don't make anything of it because I did, it would be pure speculation. The last known sighting of Grimm was two days later on September 30th in Ash Fork, Arizona, about 20 miles away from Williams. A woodcutter there saw her camping in her car and asked if she was okay. Grimm said she was doing fine, but she hasn't been heard from since. Her parents say it was normal for their daughter to camp alone. She has had a lot of training in camping and she it's something that she has done in the past she hasn't done it recently since she's moved to san diego but um well actually she had done it in august she had gone camping in august but uh, up until then I, I mean i wouldn't really characterize her as an outdoor girl a wilderness kind of person but she certainly had the skills to do that prior to her disappearance grim's parents say she went through a breakup and that her mental state was off I would say yes, but I also think it's fair to say she didn't seem completely um, even. She seemed pretty uneven that last day or two. What do you mean by uneven? Could you give me more about that? Um, just that she was, um, she had a lot on her mind that she was um, expressing through texts that she was taking into her phone as she was um traveling and you know she was upset with uh, a, a boy she was dating she was scared of him we feel like she was running away from him and um, i think overall you know that was affecting a lot of her mindset they had broken up and um you know he had posted things on social media, et cetera. So they're very well aware of him. But as to Chelsea's state of mind, I think it was affected by him and, and their breakup or, or the way they departed. But Stephen Grimm says he doesn't believe his daughter would hurt herself. It's not inconceivable, but we really don't think that was her state of mind when you look at what she was saying to us and that sort of thing. You know, it's not impossible. It's not, but it, it has not been ruled out. But, um, you know, they've done a very, very thorough search of a three mile radius around where the car was found. And so one would think that if he had come to the worst, we would have have found some evidence of that by now. There have been hunters, loggers, there have been the, the search parties, et cetera. So, um, you know, our best, our hunch, our gut is that 
you know, maybe she got a ride out of there. That's what we're kind of hoping. One day after Grimm was reported missing on October 5th, hunters in the Kabub National Forest came across her vehicle, a 2019 Ford Escape with two flat tires. It had been parked on a service road in the forest. Inside the vehicle, investigators found Grimm's camera with the most recent photo she'd taken. They've since released the pictures showing the outfit she was last seen in. The car was locked. It was neat, so there were no visual signs of a struggle. And um, it's possible that she just decided that she was going to proceed with her camping. She couldn't do anything right then and there about the car, so she perhaps was just going to continue on the idea of camping. Um, she has she has a triple a card on our family plan so we ha had told her when she started driving across the country if you have encounter any car problems use triple a get towed and tell us what you know the situation is keep us apprised of your whereabouts so that i would if she if she didn't call triple a it's because she either didn't have service or her phone wasn't working and she hasn't, I mean, her phone has not been used since the 28th or 9th. So it's either lost, broken, not charged. It, I don't know. But normally you would be using something like that to call for help. Investigators combed through the area where her vehicle was found both by land and air. During all searches, investigators came up empty. They had... Uh, mentioned on on a call we had with them Friday that they had 500 man hours in the field looking for her. Um, they've been very scientific technology being used with mapping, etc. So I feel like we've got real professionals who are truly trying uh, the very best to find her, and we're grateful for that. And yet th there are not that many new clues, so understandably, it goes to a slightly different level of immediacy for them. And it just seemed to us like it couldn't hurt to uh, hire Kelly Townsend, who we hired. Um, he specializes in missing persons. So um, maybe there's something he can do to supplement them. We're not experts in this field. We're totally unexperienced. The Grimm family has since acquired a private investigator they hope will move the case forward. Presumably the sheriff's office has a lot of other things going on simultaneously. And I think after two weeks of extensive searching for Chelsea, they're sort of waiting for more public information, waiting for more clues because they followed up everything that they really had to look into. And I think that they've done a thorough job doing that. As the search for Grimm continues, her parents have a message for their daughter. Just that we miss her tremendously and we can't bear being parted like this and we really want to have her come home. We love you, Chelsea. We can't wait to see you again. Just let us know where you are and uh, we'll take it from there. We'll go from there. Arizona officials say the investigation into Grimm's disappearance is still ongoing and ask anyone with more information to contact the Coconino County Sheriff's Office. Reporting for Law and Crime Network, I'm Sierra Gillespie.